Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Today I have a bonus episode for you. This is a conversation from a plant-powered happy hour that I hosted last week, and I just felt really compelled to share it with you. Um, This episode is for you if you've ever struggled with not feeling good enough, or perhaps you've asked yourself the question, who am I to do this? Whatever the thing is that our soul is calling us to do, you're questioning it. You're like, can I do this? Am I good enough? Who am I, right? Those questions that sometimes keep us up at night, but ultimately keep us from doing the thing. And look, I know this year has been really, really rough for us. It's a year like we could never have ever imagined. And I know some of us have lost loved ones. I know some of us have really been limited in our abilities to do the things that we used to be able to do so freely and frankly took for granted. Um, I've seen friends that I adore move home or out of state because they've lost their jobs or couldn't afford their businesses. They just couldn't afford to live where they lived anymore. And I see small businesses closing and for lease signs everywhere. And It's really, really tough, and I don't want to discount that, but I do want to say that there is hope. You know, if you are a long-term listener of mine, you know that as passionate as I am about health and wellness, you know, I'm almost equally, if not more passionate about building a business that brings you joy, that is recession-proof, and now, frankly, pandemic-proof, right? And the biggest struggle that I see that my clients and friends are constantly facing is that they have this strong desire to build something. And it's even stronger now because we've been working from home, we've been losing our jobs, people are losing clients, and they're like, I need something sustainable that also brings me joy, right? It's that passion, if it's not already burning up inside of you, 2021, you know, we're not done with this yet, unfortunately. I I really hope we will be soon. But that passion is not going anywhere. In fact, I believe it's even going to get stronger. And so what I think is holding people back is the feeling that they're not worthy of doing the thing. It's not necessarily, I don't know what I would do, or I don't know how to do it. Um, Those things, you probably know what you want. You probably can figure out the how, but the hold back is, what will people think of me? Who am I to do this? Right? And we're scared. We're in fear. I get that because I've been there. I couldn't speak to this if I hadn't been there. Um, And so What I shared in this Plant Powered Happy Hour last week was I took each of the common fears, there's nine fears or nine myths that really hold us back from our greatness, um, and I bust them so that we can truly step into our power and build something really, really beautiful, really help others, really heal the world. The world needs so much healing at this time, and you probably have a lot of gifts that you can give to the world right now and get paid for it. So... Sit back, relax, enjoy this plant-powered happy hour. I hope it resonates with you. If you are something that wants to build something bigger, some sort of wellness business in 2021 and beyond, or if you're building something and you just need that motivation, encouragement, um, that's what today is all about. And of course, I give all of my tactical tools and everything like that inside my mastermind, which you can read all about if you want to work with me further in 2021. It's at foodhealsnation.com slash rise. That's the Rise Mastermind. Last year we had 27 people and these are your podcasters, these are your yogis, these are health and wellness coaches and practitioners, these are video and content creators and bloggers and recipe makers and chefs, all powered by plants or all on a mission to serve and help others. So it's a really amazing group. It's the mastermind where I just help wellness entrepreneurs build wellness empires. So more about that at foodhealsnation.com slash rise. But for now, enjoy the plant powered happy hour. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals podcast starts now. 
I am really grateful to have you here today at this plant powered happy hour. And it's really all about how to overcome imposter syndrome and build your plant powered empire. It's brought to you by our friends at no meat athlete shout out to the team there. And first of all, I would love to meet you and hear more about who you are and what you do. So please just pop in the chat a little bit about uh, your name, what you do, where you're joining us from, anything you want to share. I'll start in case anyone's shy. Um, so I'm just going to pop this in the chat real quick. And looks like Katie is also in LA. So you know what it's like to be on lockdown, girl. Our curfew is 10 o'clock. So um, we're not really supposed to leave the house. So we got to make our new friends online and network with like-minded people online at the current time. So you guys go ahead and pop in the chat a little bit about who you are. Looks like Lacey. We've got a holistic certified nutritionist. Yes, a mom of three girls from Northern Nevada. Welcome, Lacey. Welcome, Katie. I hope some more of you guys join in and, you know, follow each other and support each other because we're all in this together, right? We're all here for a mission. We all want to spread the word of wellness or you wouldn't be here. Um, and so that's what this is all about today. And so... You know, if you don't know me, I do see some familiar faces, but I also see some unfamiliar faces. So if you don't know me, I'm Allison Melody, and essentially I help wellness entrepreneurs build wellness empires. So I do that through a lot of different ways, like coaching and consulting. I have a mastermind group, and I do happy hours just like these. Um, I teach things like podcasting, book writing, film production, um, how to book speaking gigs. This year, I helped 60 authors become bestsellers, best-selling authors on Amazon, um, sharing their story, and everyone was in the wellness and, and in the movement of helping people, you know what I mean? Um, and I help with sales funnels, audience growth, basically anything you need to share your plant powered message online to build your business so that you can get paid to help people and do what you love. And I always talk about how, you know, there are so many um, people out there or corporations and organizations out there making billions of dollars, keeping people sick right? I don't have to name them. You know who they are. And why shouldn't we all get paid to keep people healthy, to get them on the path to health? So that's why we're here tonight. We will go an hour. And if we, um, if people want to stick around for questions and to chat, I'm all yours. I will be here. If you can't attend the entire thing, we will email out a replay. So no worries on that. Um, so the business I just told you about where I help wellness entrepreneurs, um, sorry if I'm looking everywhere, I just keep checking to make sure that no one's joining because um, I can't turn off the waiting room now that we're in this, unfortunately, which is a flaw on Zoom because you used to be able to. Anyways, um, so if I'm all over the place, I do apologize. But the business I started helping wellness entrepreneurs happen after I started hosting the Food Heals podcast. And that's where I interview people who have healed themselves naturally of chronic degenerative diseases. Most of my guests are plant-based um, and everyone just has an amazing healing journey. And I wanted to share that with the world. So let me give you a little bit of background so you know where I'm coming from. Um, a few years ago, I, years and years ago now, actually, I shouldn't say a few, but I went through a very intense trauma. I lost both of my parents to battles with cancer in very short succession, one right after the other. And I saw Western medicine completely fail them. And I say that with the caveat that I'm not anti-Western medicine, but it did not work for them. The drugs and prescribed chemotherapy, nothing worked. I watched, I watched them lose their hair, their vitality, and I even watched them eventually lose their will to live because they were so unhappy. The treatment seemed harsher than the disease and the doctors had no answer. I I asked the doctors back then, and please understand that I'm, you know, fresh out of college. Um, well, with my mom, I was still in college. With my dad, I was fresh out of college. And I asked the doctors, does nutrition matter? And the doctors said no. And I said, okay, Dr. God, like just thinking they know everything. Thank you very much. And I never considered uh, nutrition again. Um, hi, I see some more people have joined. I'm so excited. We've got Bruce from Ann Arbor. We've got Karen from Vancouver. Katie is a dietitian and plant-based chef and body image coach. God, so important. So glad to connect with you as well. Maradelli Riviera. Let's see. Creator of Marley Vegan from Puerto Rico. Welcome. Chris Amos, real estate entrepreneur, also representing LA. LA in the house. All right. I got some more people in the waiting room. This is going to happen from time to time. I apologize, you guys. Um, so, 
essentially the doctor said, no, nutrition doesn't matter. And by the time I was 25 years old, I was an orphan. Both my parents passed away and I was just left with more questions than answers. You know, I was like, how has, how are we so advanced in society? And the Western medical system completely failed my parents and had no answers. And I knew nothing about diet or nutrition. And there was a sequence of synchronistic events that really happened. So I started meeting people and it was all these people who had healed themselves of chronic degenerative diseases through things like juicing, cleansing, turning to a plant-based diet. And I learned that the plant-based vegan diet was the most anti-cancer diet in existence. So suddenly I went from being asleep to being awake. And I wanted to shout this from the rooftops. I came out of the other side of this trauma with an absolute mission that what happened to my parents and what happened to me, you know, as the daughter losing uh, of the person going through loss, this was never going to happen to anyone else because now I had the knowledge I was empowered. So I had this mission to inform people that the body was designed to heal itself if we gave it the tools it needed to do so. So I wanted to spread the news, you know, stop outsourcing your, your health, to doctors and take our health back into our own hands and we can heal ourselves, mind, body, and spirits. So I'm telling everybody this, right? You guys, as it turned out, not everyone wanted to hear what I had to say. So I'd be like, Hey girl, do you know that dairy is linked to cancer and cow's milk, cow's milk is full of pus and like, don't get me started on sugar. And you're saying that to someone while they're biting into a grilled cheese sandwich or an ice cream sundae. And they're like, I don't want to hear about this. So please don't do what I did. Maybe you're guilty of it if you've been on a similar mission. Maybe you're not. But don't do what I did because there's a different way to find your tribe. And that's what I discovered. So first I started a blog. It was a failed blog. No one read it. Um, And then I went through this major like imposter syndrome thing where I was like, I have all this knowledge. No one wants to hear it. And who am I to talk about it? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I don't have any um, credentials behind me, but I know it's true because I have now seen it to be true. And I've read books and I've interviewed people and my whole life had changed and I wanted to help other people change their lives. But who wants to listen to this little blonde girl talking about carrot juice and sprouting and supplements? So that was the imposter monster, right? I'm sure some of you have experienced that. Feel free to raise your hand if you're on video or type a yes in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. Um, And so that's what I had to bust in order to create my plant-powered brand and share my mission and message with the world and eventually get paid for it, right? Make it my career. So failed blog. Then it wasn't until I started the Food Heals podcast that I finally found an outlet for my passion. So I got a little bit more savvy. I learned about other things I could do. I had gone to college for video production, so I understood video and I understood marketing. Once I put it all together, I was able to create fans and followers and listeners who wanted to hear what I had to say. So I created this platform where people who had healed themselves could come on my show, share their story and inspire others to do the same, which then led to a book, which is all plant powered healing stories of people who have healed themselves. And it just has snowballed since then. So Food Heals became this amazing platform and brand where I could share my passion and have other people share theirs and help people who wanted to hear what I had to say. So instead of trying to convince someone who doesn't want to hear it, I can speak to those who do. And they're out there, you guys. There are more people who need our message, who need our help, than there are helping people. So we're going to get really deep into that. Um, And, you know, Food Heals was a brand that I created and I had no idea what it would lead me to. I was speaking on stages across the US. I went to Australia, France, Ireland. I got a book deal, wrote my first book. I have coaching clients. I have uh, courses and people will buy them while I'm sleeping. Um, I have so much sponsorship swag that I have a swag closet behind me full of healing vitamins and supplements and shampoos that are non-toxic because people want to work with you when you have a passion and a mission for health and wellness. And you know, I've gotten press passes to incredible parties and events before COVID. COVID. You know, the list goes on and on of the opportunities that opened up for me when I decided I'm going to speak my truth and I'm going to be strategic about it and I'm going to stop caring what other people think about me. I'm going to stop worrying about online haters and trolls and I'm going to stop thinking I'm not good enough and who am I to do this? So I got hooked and I just got so excited that I was able to live in alignment with my mission, my values, helping people get healthy and 
I went from being a failed blogger to living a really good life of my dreams. And I want to help you do that too. If I was able to overcome the imposter syndrome monster and create a platform to spread my message and help people get healthy, I know I can help you do it too, because I'm not special. Like I'm just like you. Um, I believe that we are all here put here for a purpose. And if we live in our truth and stand in our power, we're absolutely unstoppable. So let's go through this today. I want to talk about imposter syndrome. I'm going to bust all the myths that we have in our heads so we can get out of that, right? And this might be something you have to watch a couple times. You know, sometimes you have those books that you have to read a few times before that really sinks in, or you gain some of the knowledge once at a time. And then the next time you go back and you get more nuggets, this is really going to be inspirational, but also actionable. So keep that in mind. All right, let me check the, okay, admit. Sorry, guys. Okay, making sure everyone gets in. And yes, okay, do we have more comments? Okay, I think I got all the comments so far. Okay, great. So if you've ever felt like a fraud, if you worried that you're going to be exposed, if you have trouble accepting praise, if you can't say thank you, if someone gives you a compliment, and you're like, no, 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 right? you may be suffering from imposter syndrome. I bet a lot of you can relate. And I looked up the stats and Psychology Today says that people who struggle with imposter syndrome have this underlying belief that they're undeserving of their achievements, of their worth, of their value. And they think that they aren't as competent or intelligent as others might think. And soon enough, people are going to find out. So if you experience this, you're not alone. 70% of us have experienced imposter syndrome at some point of, in our lives. That number actually shocked me because I was like, who are these 30% that are like, I'm amazing. <laughs> like, who are you? I need to meet you because I think most of us are like, I'm not good enough. I don't know. I'm going to stay small until we force ourselves to overcome that. So Maybe you have found yourself asking the same questions over and over, like, who am I to do a blog, a YouTube channel, a podcast, write a book, become a coach, create an online course? Who am I to charge for that work? That's a big one. I know a lot of people in the yoga world are like, I don't want to charge for this. And it's like, but you are giving something of value, right? Who will listen? Who will watch? Who will care? What will people think of me? So, you know, I would love if anyone is willing to admit it, and you don't have to, but if you can relate to this, type something in the chat that the imposter monster has told you about yourself, that I shouldn't do this because, or I'm not good enough because, or some BS. You know, it probably goes back to something unrelated in childhood or whatever. It doesn't matter. We don't have to get deep into that, but I would love to hear if anyone is willing to share it. You know what? This is how I feel and why I haven't done the thing. So, the good news about imposter syndrome is that you would not feel these feelings if you weren't on the precipice of something great, if you weren't a high achiever, if you weren't following your dreams. So congratulations, round of applause. You are about to step into who you are truly meant to be. So there's a great book. Feel free to look it up. It is called The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women. It, it relates to men too, guys. Don't worry. Dr. Valerie Young. And she breaks down the imposter monster into five types. And I really resonated with this. Um, and I bet a lot of you can too. Perfectionist, superwoman or superman, natural genius, soloist, and expert. So please let me know in the chat if you can relate to any of these. The perfectionist feels like if they want, sorry, I hit my mic. If they want something done right, they have to do it themselves. These are like our micromanagers, control freaks, people who don't believe it's good enough until it's perfect. We also have the superwoman or superman. They are convinced they're frauds. Um, among like real deal colleagues and people, they often push themselves to work harder to measure up. They may stay up late, work long hours, and push themselves harder than everyone around them. And sometimes we call them our workaholics or they could be accused of having work addiction. Um, the natural genius believes they should just understand everything right away without much effort. They set, they set this bar, the internal bar, so high, just like perfectionists, but you know, they, they, if they take too long to master something, they feel shame. Um, and then there's the soloist and they believe that asking for help means they're a fraud because they should already have all the answers, right? They firmly believe that to be of value, you need to accomplish things on your own. And the expert measures their confidence, expert is the last one, based on what and how much they know or can do. So they kind of believe like they're never enough and they feel like uh, they're scared that they're going to be exposed as inexperienced or unknowledgeable. So listen, 
no matter what category of all of those I just went over that you fall into, and you may fall into multiple, totally guilty, admit, um, it really does come down to one question. And that question is, who am I to do this? Who am I to do this? To which I will argue and challenge you right now, who are you not to do this? We all have an amazing plethora of skills, abilities, talents, and life lessons. No one has the same experience as you do, right? It's like we have come to this earth. We have lived these lives, and no one has the same experience as you. And all of our experiences are life lessons that got us to where we are, who I would argue, you know, are are more important than our academic degrees, right? And not that those don't matter. Of course they do, but... Our experiences make us who we are. They teach us lessons that make us go, we're going to do it different this time. We're going to teach our children different this time. We're going to show up different this time. So again, who are you not to do this? We have one life to live. So let's just live it with absolute purpose and absolute passion. So, all right. You're probably wondering, let me get some water real quick. Thank you. <clears throat> for giving me that space. <laughs> Let me check the waiting room. But you're probably wondering, you know, how do I stop this imposter monster, this imposter syndrome from preventing me from living the life that I want to live with that passion and that purpose? So I'm going to argue that the answer is simple. Um, and so bear with me because we're going to go through all of this. But I believe the only way to stop feeling like an imposter is to stop thinking like an imposter. So we're going to change our thought process. Um, Let's dig a little deeper into that. So I came up with some judgments based on talking to my clients and people in my mastermind and friends and family. And I just started seeing these patterns emerge. And I was like, wow, just like the woman who wrote the book about the archetypes of imposter monster, I found all these commonalities. You may face or relate to only a few, or you may relate to them all. So see where you are, but all of these can be overcome. So let's break them down. The number one fear that many of us face is the fear that others will judge us. I know you're not all on video right now, but if you can relate to that and you are on video, give me a hands up just so I know that you understand what this feels like, right? All right. Oops, I just put it on full screen by accident. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> so the fear that others will judge us. We're afraid of other people's judgment and their opinions of us. We worry what will people think of us and listen, okay, are people going to judge us? Yeah, yeah. That's just a part of life, okay? But it's how we respond to it that matters. Are you guys with me? Like, okay. Oh my gosh, sorry. I keep going to full screen back. So um, I just want to make sure no one's joining. All right. It's like, it's a part of life that people are going to judge us, but it's how we respond to it that matters. So are we going to let it roll off our backs? Um, Are we going to give an F? Think about it. Are you really not going to do the thing that your soul is calling you to do that you can feel so deeply inside of you because of what some girl you went to college with thinks or what some guy on your Facebook thinks or what a family member will say? So, all right, how do we stop caring what other thing, other people think? I love quotes. They bring me back to my higher self, um, into my self-confidence. So I will be sharing a lot with you throughout this training. Um, But one of my favorite ones is be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. So this quote was attributed to Dr. Seuss, but I dug a little deeper and found out that it was actually originally said by FDR presidential advisor Bernard Baruch. And he was asked how he handled the seating arrangements for those who attended his dinner parties. And I just thought that was really funny that this has been around for years and years and years. Like this is not a new thing. We think because of social media, this is a new thing. This is not new. And excuse me, whether Dr. Sue said it or Bernard said it, I don't actually care. I'm just going to keep saying it because it's really powerful. Be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. I don't care about what your friend thinks about you writing your plant-powered memoir. I don't care about what your old boss thinks when you go on to build a business you love and write a story for Elephant Journal or HuffPo about quitting the nine to five and doing what you love and doing what you want to do. 
Don't worry about what your former drinking buddy is going to think when you start a podcast series or write a book about your sober journey. I don't care if you share your spiritual journey on TikTok and your non-believer friends don't understand. This is not for them. This is not for them. You are creating content for the people who need your message now, and they are out there. You are not creating content for your haters, your doubters, your detractors. You are creating the content for those that you can help, for those who are on a similar path, and maybe they're just a few steps behind. You always want to talk to your most loving listener. You want to write to your most excited reader. Listen, I'm vegan. I'm plant-based. I am not here to argue with people about me. I'm here to share with people who are already curious about the plant-powered message, about the vegan diet. I am here for them. I am not here to argue against other people. And when you write to your most excited reader and your most loving listener, you know, you talk to them, you cultivate this tribe of people who need your unique perspective, who will hang on to your every word, who will join your movement. That's what this is all about. And I know this from experience. Um, And another quote that I love, Viola Davis put it best when she said, I don't have time to stay up all night worrying about what someone who doesn't love me has to say about me. So just take that in. It's not for them, right? The second fear that we often face is fear of our own greatness. This one's funny because you're like, no, I want to be great, but people are afraid to shine. So maybe you fear that you'll be exposed as a fraud if you shine your light too bright and let people see the real you. Take off the mask and they see you, who you are. Um, I love Marianne Williamson, and she says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light. It is not our, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Again, actually, who are you not to be? Straight from Marianne. So I ask you right now, who are you not to be an expert published author? You know, why should only some people be a person of influence on Instagram or a world-renowned coach or a talk show host or have an amazing YouTube channel? Why not you? Why shouldn't it be you? Why play small? The Marianne Williamson quote does continue, your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. Like, think about it. What a kid, what a child think or worry, like, what are others going to think of me when I create that piece of art, when I make that play, um, write this poetry or create their own dance move? No, they are fully in their creativity and they don't have a care for the world around them. So just try to think like a child would. Every, everything I do, I'm like, what would a child do in this situation to make it fun and light and easily? So the Marianne Williamson quote continues, as we let our own life shine, light shine, we give unconsciously, give other people permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So you're doing a service for the world when you do things for yourself to help others. We are meant to be great and live in our truth, love, and abundance. Number three is fear of being exposed as a fraud. I know a lot of you can relate. I definitely had this one. Um, So first of all, know that you're not alone in that thinking. Everyone on this call has probably experienced this to some degree, or you wouldn't have been attracted to be here. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't even want to join this. Um, And think about, there are so many authors and world renowned actors and people in the public eye that we really admire who have also suffered from feeling like a fraud or being exposed. So I feel like we're like, oh, we're too small. No one else understands this. But so many people of uh, value and with a mission have experienced this. So Mary, M- Maya Angelou is a good example. Once she said, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, "Uh uh-oh, they're going to find out now. I've run a game on everybody and they're going to find me out. Maya freaking Angelo, okay? Seth Godin wrote in The Icarus Deception that after a dozen bestsellers, he still feels like a fraud all the time. A dozen bestsellers, you guys. Um, Kate Winslet, I mean, do I have to say anything else? So she said, sometimes I wake up in the morning before I go off to a shoot and I think, I can't do this. I'm a fraud. Girl, you're in Titanic. (laughs) Am I right? Like, 
you just don't think that other people think this way, especially people that we hail in high regard, but you know what? They actually do. So it's quite interesting when you start studying it. I just want you to know that if you're feeling alone, you're not alone in feeling like a fraud. When we feel like a fraud, it's really time to develop a new script. So right now, you probably have these automatic mental tapes that start playing through your head in situations that trigger those imposter feelings. Let's say you start a new project or you start something new. Um, it could be a book, a podcast, a something for a client, a YouTube series. But instead of thinking those old thoughts, those old, old tapes or whatever, that say, wait till I find, wait till they find out that I have no idea what I'm doing. Try instead just reframing it and thinking, you know what? Everyone who starts something new, they feel out of place in the beginning. And maybe I don't know the, all the answers right now, but I'm brilliant. I'm fabulous. I'm experienced. And I am perfectly capable of figuring this out. And I love Marie Forleo. Forleo her new book is Everything is Figure Outable. So it's just like, you got this. Remember that you got this. Remember that your life experiences brought you here for a reason in perfect timing. And be authentic as much as you can. Never try to be someone else. That person that you are when you're out to brunch with friends or out to coffee or hanging out with your crew, they love you for exactly who you are. So be that person when it comes to your brand. Be that person online. Let that voice be the voice that drives the podcast, the book, the YouTube series, whatever it may be. Because when you are authentically you, your true fans, your true followers, your readers, and your listeners and watchers, they just appear. It's just what happens. The next fear people deal with is the fear that, oh, everyone else is already doing it. Can you guys relate? Like, oh, someone else is doing this. I can't do this. Um, you may think that there's so many people doing it that you can't do it, that the vegan spirituality cookbook or whatever it may be um, that, that you want to write has already been written or that there are so many Instagram pages dedicated to healthy recipes or fitness or veganism that why would you do it? Because there's so many people already doing it. Sure. Yeah, they're out there. They're doing it. Great. There's no competition. Other people are doing similar things in the world. But guess what? You're going to do it differently. You have your own knowledge, your own experience, your own wisdom, your own perspective that is unique only to you. Not one other person on this planet, take that in, not one other person on this planet has the unique set of perspectives, abilities, and skills that you possess. Your story, it's unlike anyone else's. No two stories are the same. And Marie Forleo again says, there has never been and will never be another you. You have a purpose, a very special gift that only you can bring to the world. So just keep that in mind. There is room for everyone. So there's no excuse not to do the thing. Go do the thing. The next one is fear of bad reviews, online trolls, and haters. Look, I've had them. I get them. It's not fun. I don't love it. You know, it's not my favorite thing. So if you worry about garnering bad reviews online, getting negative comments, feedback, worried about those trolls and haters, let's be real. Are you going to get them? Yes, you are. If you're doing anything of value, anything meaningful in this damn world, there are people who are not going to like it. So you have to expect the haters. You have to expect the trolls. You have to expect you're going to get bad reviews and just have a plan ready for when they happen. And don't worry because they say you haven't really made it in the online space until you get your first bad review. So when I got my first negative review of Food Heals, I was like, where's the wine? Cheers. <laughs> Let's celebrate, right? I'm ready to celebrate because that means I've made an impact. I've made a difference. And so here's my personal plan of attack when dealing with the negativity online. It's forgive and delete. Forgive and delete. I believe that negativity from anyone else, from someone else, is much more a reflection of who they are, of unresolved issues within themselves than it is even about me. So that really helps me remember to not take it personally because it is not about me. It is about unresolved issues within their own consciousness. If you want to read further into this, this is like psychology 101. It's projections, right? So when I keep that in mind, I can actually have compassion 
for the hater, which I know is hard because at first it hurts. It hurts real bad. You question yourself. You question what you're doing. But then when you get to that point of, per, of, of, of compassion and forgiveness for the hater, even when it hurts, if you can forgive them, you are above the rest and then you can continue. So I do forgive and delete. I forgive and I say, I'm so sorry for whatever it was that you've gone through to bring you to this moment where you decide that you have to attack me when I'm amazing, right? Um, and then I delete the hurtful comments and move on. And then if the negativity continues, block the person, you know? Um, so I really believe that that forgiveness opens the door to my freedom. Because if I hold something against someone else, guess what? I'm really just holding it against myself. It's not affecting them. So I have to make sure that I'm in that space to continuously forgive, forgive, and then delete. Because that doesn't need to be on my page, right? The next one is fear of failure. And I get it. But the wonderful thing about failure is that it is entirely up to us how to look at it. So yeah, we can choose to see failure like, oh, this is the end of the world or choose to see failure as proof of how inadequate we are, right? Or we can reframe and we can look at failure as the incredible learning experience that it very often is. Every time that we fail at something, we can choose to look for that lesson we're meant to learn and reroute, right? These lessons are so important. They're how we grow. They're how we you know, keep from making the same as mistake again. They're how we detour. And failure only stops us if we let that failure stop us. So I don't believe in failure. Failure is opportunity. Failure is opportunity. So let's look at that failure as an opportunity to choose a new path and never, ever give up. Okay. So think about Michael Jordan. I mean, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. I don't think most people would argue with me. And yet Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team because his coach goes, I don't think you have enough skill. I don't know if you have it in you. Um, what if Michael had quit right then? Warren Buffett, one of the world's most richest and most successful businessmen, rejected by Harvard University. Eh, we know his story. He didn't give up. Um, Richard Branson, owner of Virgin Empire. He's a high school dropout. Thomas Edison, he said he had not failed, but had found a thousand ways that what he had invented did not work. There is no failure. There's just another way to do things and another path to go on. Henry Ford said, failure is simply the opportunity to begin again. It is all in how we look about it. Look at it. Hmm. I'm making up things now. How we look at it. All right. Got someone in the waiting room. All right. The next fear that we experience is fear of being too old. A lot of my clients and colleagues and friends think, they're too old to create an online career or to join a new social media channel, start a YouTube channel, a TikTok, a podcast, or write a book. But this is simply a reflection of what society has told us, you know, women especially for far too long. But, you know, I'm in my late 30s. I've been an editor, a producer, a podcast host, an author, a course creator, a karaoke host. You know what? I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I'm still figuring it out. I'm having a blast every day. But I personally choose to believe that the possibilities are endless. So Walt Disney says growing up is mandatory, but grow growing old is mandatory, but growing up is optional. So I like to keep that in mind. So I wanted to give you, if that is one of your fears, a few of my favorite examples of people who really did make it later in life. So Lucille Ball, the actress, was 38 when I Love Lucy premiered. Vera Wang designed her first bridal gown when she got married at 40. Toni Morrison, the Pulitzer Prize winner, was 40 when her first book was published. Leslie Jones became a cast member of Saturday Night Live when she was 47. Charles Darwin actually published The Theory of Evolution when he was 50. Bram Stoker's Dracula was published when he was 50. Irvin Randall, who is known on Instagram as Mr. Hashtag Mr. Steal Your Grandma, was 55 years old when he became a fashion influencer. Ernestine Shepard, 78 years old, world's oldest female bodybuilder, started at the age of 56. Frank McCourt was 66 years old when he published Angela's 
Ashes, which if you've read it, it's his Pulitzer Prize winning memoir. If you've seen Granny Potty Mouth on YouTube, Petty Glenn started her YouTube channel when she was retired at 68. Um, if you know the influencer Tetsuya, um, he went from being a retired chemistry teacher to an Instagram style icon when he was 84 years old. And if you guys know the fruitcake lady, Marie Rudicell, she was 89 when she made her first appearance on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Look, if they can do it, so can all of us at any age and at any time in our lives. You know, Coco Chanel said you can be gorgeous at 30, charming at 40, and irresistible for the rest of your life. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to choose irresistibility for the rest of my life. All right. The next fear is the fear that you may not be able to convince other people of your message. So if you were here with me in the beginning, I shared the story of how I wasn't able to to shout my message from the rooftops because so many people didn't want to hear it. And so I was like, oh my gosh, but I have the answer. It's nutrition and food. They heal. And there were so many people that didn't want to hear what I had to say. And so that got me into that state of feeling like, well, no one wants to hear it. Who am I going to talk about it? I should just be quiet. So let's bust that myth right now. Let's let it go. Look, you have a message, you have a mission, and it's not for everyone. Not everyone is going to get it, but you are writing, you are podcasting, you are making videos, you are TikToking, whatever it might be, for the ones who do. You are speaking to the ones who need you, for the ones you can help, the ones you can teach, the ones that can help ignite that spark that goes and changes their entire life. Write to your most loving reader. Speak to your most loving listener. You will attract the tribe who needs what you have to say. And again, your job is not to convince anyone of anything. Your job is to share yourself, your story, your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience with others, unashamed, untethered, without regret, right? There are more people who need our help than there are helping people. And Denzel Washington says, you never know how or when you'll have an impact or how important your example can be to someone else. And so I just want to go through this a little bit deeper. I So many people, clients, friends, everyone asks me, all right, Allie, how do I get those fans, those followers, those listeners, those readers? What should I post to social media to have a bigger impact to get more followers? What do I blog about for more readers? What do I podcast about for more downloads? What should I post on social media to get the attention of sponsors? What do I podcast about to get more downloads? Like I, I, all the things. I think I said that twice. Sorry. But like, listen, again, you're going to speak to your most loving listener. You're going to talk to the person who needs you the most. The answer is actually simple. Whatever you're thinking about posting, talking about, writing about, ask yourself this one question. Are you moved by your message? Are you moved by your message? When Joaquin Phoenix or, uh, won his Oscar for Joker, he used the stage as a platform to speak about animal activism and gender inequality, the environment, racism. He brought himself to tears. He was moved by his message on that stage in that moment. There's this great clip on YouTube when Kelly Clarkson returned to the American Idol stage for the, I think it was the finale episode, and she performs piece by piece live, and she's brought to tears by the word of her own song because it's literally about how her father was absent and her husband will be the father to her children that she never had. She is brought to tears, and she apologizes in the middle of her song. She is moved by her message. You know... When I read the first chapter of my book, Food Heals, which is about the story I told you in the beginning where I lost both of my parents to cancer, and I, I was 25 years old and I had to completely rebuild my life from scratch, I cry every single time because I am still moved by my own message. If we are moved by our messages, others are going to be too. Look, I'm not saying that everything that you post has to make you cry, but it's like, will it elicit a feeling from your audience? Will it make them laugh? Will it inspire them? Will it challenge them? Will it give them the chills, right? If you can elicit that feeling from your audience, you know, your content is going to have an impact. 
And the more often you're moved by your message, the more often your audience will be too. The listeners will come, the downloads will follow, all the things, the readers will appear, You'll your tribe, your super fans, they will find you and they will hang on to every single word. And your impact and your influence and your income will grow when you are truly moved by your message. So don't hold back. Keep spreading that message. You know, J.K. Rowling turned down by 12 publishers, 12 publishers, before publishing the first Harry Potter book, right? I mean, best-selling book series in history. What if J.K. Rowling had given up after being turned down by that 11th publisher, right? So you've got to think about that. Um, when Gabby Bernstein was on my podcast, she said, if I hadn't written her book, her, her, her memoir, Spirit Junkie, about getting sober, thousands and thousands of people would not be healed and sober today. So if you're still with me, I would love for you to think about how you've done this in your life and pop something in the chat right now that if you hadn't done something greater wouldn't have occurred. I would love to hear from you if you are so brave to share. You know, you are doing this for the people who need you. You're not doing this for the haters and the trolls, right? You are doing these from those future emails that come in and go, oh my God, thank you so much. This blog entry changed my life. This podcast episode made me change my food, whatever it is. Just remember, it could be your story that ends up being the key to unlocking someone else's prison. And isn't that why we do this? Isn't that all worth it? That's why we're doing this in the first place, because we have a plant-powered message to share with the world. You never know who's listening or who's watching. You never know who your message is really going to impact. So it's not about you. Let it go. It's not about you. It's about the people that you can truly serve with your story. So for that reason, you guys, there is no imposter. There is no way that you can be an imposter of yourself take that in. You cannot be an imposter of yourself, right? All right. I got one more myth we're going to bust and then I would love to check in and see how you're doing, what you're thinking, if you have any questions. But the last one is fear that you need permission, permission to do the thing. We live in this digital world with more opportunities than ever in history. If you have a smartphone, you can influence people with your message. With your smartphone, you can change the world. Actors no, have, no longer have to audition for a part. They can create their own YouTube channel or TikTok channel. People don't have to slave away at a, at a nine to five until they're old and gray and wait for retirement. They can start a business online right now and live the life they dreamed about well before retirement age. There are no gatekeepers anymore. The only person holding us back, are, holding us back from greatness is ourselves, right? I've talked about this with so many friends and colleagues and clients. And it even came up again earlier this week with my client that very often we seek for permission outside of ourselves to do the thing. We seek validation from others to validate our ideas. On my coaching calls, yeah, I may be giving advice, but very often all I'm doing is mirroring back to my client what they're already capable of and giving them permission to do the thing. I, I told one of my clients recently, like, you know that all I did today was give you permission to do the things that you already fully capable of and know you're going to do. And she was like, yeah, that's right. She's like, I'm not there yet. And that's okay. She needed my permission. Fine. But soon she will not need my permission. She's going to give herself the permission she needs to do the thing. Why do we seek outside of ourselves for permission? Look, you could go real deep and figure it out if you wanted to go psychologically. It's very often childhood trauma, or in my case, it's like losing my parents at an early age when I was always seeking for outside guidance and knowledge from other people to go, oh, you're doing okay. Oh, I'm proud of you, right? So it might be something like that for you. It doesn't matter. We got to let that go. So do whatever it is that you need to do psychologically to let go of any trauma or any misbeliefs that you have around this because People are waiting for you and you are the one that you have been waiting for. Give yourself that permission. Whenever you find yourself in fear or any of the misbeliefs that we went over today, grab a journal, rewrite that story. I'm always taking my thoughts and I'm going, that's a negative thought or that's a misbelief, reframing it. So every time I say one thing, I repeat it three times with the opposite thing, right? 
So if you popped anything in the chat that the imposter monster has been telling you, I would love for you to rephrase it. If you thought it to yourself and didn't feel comfortable popping in the chat, that's okay. Just pop in your head something amazing about yourself. So like if you're, if you're, if your misbelief or your phrase was, who am I to write a book, a cookbook about the healing power of food? You, your new phrase could be, oh my gosh, the world needs my book to learn about the healing power of nutrition and food. I am the expert because I have lost weight doing this. I have done over 300 interviews on the topic and I've seen the, the body's amazing ability to heal itself, right? That's probably mine. But what is yours? Think about what yours is. You can also keep an evidence journal. So I always write things down when, when I do help someone, I go, oh my gosh, this person just texted me how much my blog helped them or how much my phone call helped them or whatever it may be. So be keeping an evidence journal so you don't forget when you do help people because every little bit matters and it will help build that confidence, right? Um, and just remember, when you live in your truth and you stand in your power, you are unstoppable. So if you've gotten some value out of today, I would love for you to pop a yes in the chat. Um, I would love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat as well. And it looks like I've missed a bunch of comments. So I'm really, really excited to see you guys on here. So yes, Katie has found some value. And Karen says, as someone who has suffered with bulimia for 40 years, I finally figured out that a healthy plant-based diet is the only way to control the binge eating. Wow. No one is going to puke up a carrot. I love that, Karen. Share that message. You're going to help so many people. And Katie can't think of anything, but maybe it's her imposter syndrome. That's okay. Maybe you're doing good. Lucy, that Lacey, sorry, that is one that you can relate to. Looks like Karen. Yeah. You're a little bit of all of the different groups. Yes. Um, yes. Let's see. Patricia says, you know, she can relate to feeling like I've been successful, but I feel like I am not enough. Um, so you guys are with me and let's bust all those right now. You can listen to this over and over. And I would love to share with you that if you do want to work with me to bust these myths even further, I do help wellness entrepreneurs build wellness entre um, empires. And so what I do is essentially every year, we're going to start a new one in January as I do a year long mastermind. It's monthly. We do it on zoom. We all chat and support one another throughout the month. We have a really supportive community of wellness entrepreneurs, mostly vegan, um, really people who are making a difference in the world. We've got podcasters and video producers and people creating content online, coaches, public speakers, all the things. Most people do a little bit of it all. And what I teach is how to build that online wellness empire. So I'll pop that in the chat right now in case you want to work for me. It's a super low, I'm not, it's not like a high ticket offer or anything like that. So that's at foodhealsnation.com slash rise. So pop in the chat if you have any questions about today's training or any questions about building your online business. I'm really, really passionate about helping wellness entrepreneurs build their empires. Like I told you earlier, I've helped 60 people in 2020 make their write their book and make them bestsellers on Amazon. Um, it's something I feel really good about because when you share that knowledge with the world, it becomes a calling card to lead to many more things like speaking gigs and um, it can lead to clients and it just gives you so much credibility in the world. So I really believe in book writing. Um, and if you have maybe a wellness practitioner, there are so many ways that you can monetize your brand by creating your own supplement lines or things like that. If you have, um, maybe you're more into fashion and you want to have a fashion line that has to do with wellness. You know, these are all the things that we teach in the rise mastermind. And this is all what I am super passionate about teaching. And I have guest speakers come in and it's really a family of people where we all help each other. So let's see anything coming into the chat. Okay. I don't see any questions. So we've got nine minutes left. Um, so I'll take you through some of the rise mastermind unless I get any questions until then. And if you got to go, we'll see you soon. And I will post the replay and Oh, Karen says, thank you so much for this great presentation. I appreciate you, Karen. Thank you so much for coming. I am really grateful to have you. Um, so I'll keep, I'll keep looking for questions in in the chat and, um, if none come in, I'll just tell you more about the mastermind that starts in January, which I'd love to have you. It's a high vibe, one year wellness business mastermind. We meet once a month on Wednesdays. We have a Facebook group. We have an Instagram group. And it's really 
rises for wellness entrepreneurs who want to produce more income in their business and create more time freedom to pursue their passion. So if that sounds like you, check it out, foodhealsnation.com slash rise. You get a two-hour monthly coaching call with me and amazing interviewees and experts that I bring in. Like we talk about marketing and monetization and networking and sales funnels, podcasting, blogging, video production, copywriting, speaking, coaching, social media, sponsorship, online courses, summits, membership sites, events, retreats, and more. All of the things. You get access to the Food Heals VIP Club with bonus content, covers topics like health and vegan business, spirituality, relationships, wellness, manifestation, the law of attraction, so much more. You get lifetime access to all the trainings and courses and replays. You know, um, we have our Facebook group where we all collaborate. So we all interview each other on each other's shows because there's so much synergy because we're all, you know, there's no one in there who's trying to sell cars and I have nothing against car salesmen, but I can't help them. It's really all for wellness entrepreneurs who want to build a wellness brand. And so we're all in this together. We all have a mission. And so we all really grow together. And um, so I'd love to help you do that. You know, we do so many things. I've got a ton of testimonials. It's only $111 a month until the end of December. And then the price does go up. But what you get for $111 a month is very, I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'll go over above and beyond to bring you so much of value. So check it out. And if you have any questions, just email me at info at foodhealsnation. Dot com and I'm happy to answer all your questions. Karen says, that sounds amazing. Yes, Karen, I would love to have you. Katie says, yay, thank you very much. This was great. Thank you, Katie, for being here. Mara Deli, I hope I'm pr- pronouncing your name right. Mara Deli Riviera says, thank you. So I'm so grateful to have all of you here tonight. Um, and I'll stick around if you have any questions because we do have about five minutes left. And if you want to join me or work with me, foodhealsnation.com slash rise, or just shoot me an email if you want to talk personally and just see if any of this is a fit for you. Info at foodhealsnation.com. And of course, the imposter syndrome is something that you will get over, but it's going to take time. So a lot of the practices that I talked about today, like journaling are very important. Keeping that evidence journal to remind yourself of when you do impact people. So you don't forget when you get compliments. You've got to remember remember those and keep them in your consciousness so that, you know, you keep reminding yourself like you are doing something, you are making a difference. When you do start to get those positive reviews, put them on a vision board. Remember that you are helping people, right? Um, Let's see. Karen says, that sounds amazing. Can you review the eighth fear? Because you are talking. All right, let me pull up my notes and I'll tell you what the eighth fear was. Um, So yeah, I can go through the fears really quickly if that would be helpful to anyone who is taking notes. You can also watch this again. I will provide the video and the audio. So the eighth fear was fear that you won't be able to convince people of your message. And so that was all about, you know, if you are worried you can't convince people, you have to remember that you are not there for everyone. You are there for the people who are ready to receive. And so as long as you are constantly talking to your most loving listener or watcher or whatever it may be, writing to your most loving reader, the person who's like, I can't wait to hear more. I'm not writing to the person to convince them to not eat meat. That's not my target audience. You want to write to your target audience, the person that you can help right now. And if you are moved by your own message, your audience will be too. And so that's how we attract people into our sphere of influence. You understand? That's how we naturally bring people. I am not talking to my detractors. I'm not talking to my haters. I'm not talking to the people who don't want to hear what I have to say. I am talking to that person who's just, you know, maybe they, they just discovered this and they're just a few notches behind me and they just want to learn how to eat right. Or they just want to learn a little bit about Um, how to meditate, whatever it is that I've mastered that I can help them, even if I'm still on my journey doing it, if I can help someone get to where I am, we can all level up together, right? So that was what the fear was, fear that you may not be able to convince people of your message. So if you want three minutes left, we can go back through um, and make sure that if you um, want the replay or if you want to share this with others that you're on the email list, I believe that you all are. Um, But again, you know, to master imposter syndrome, you just have to get over those nine fears, which we went over today. So watch the video if you need a reminder. But what is the first one? The number one fear 
many of us face is that fear that others will judge us. So we talked about that and how to get over it. The second one was fear of our own greatness. Then there was fear of being exposed as a fraud. Then there was the fear that everyone else is already doing it. Then there was the fear of bad reviews, online trolls, and haters. Then, of course, the fear of failure, the fear of being too old, and the fear that you won't be able to convince other people of your message. And finally, it was the fear that you need permission to give the thing. And so we talked about giving yourself permission. So watch the replay. If you need a reminder, it's like a good book that you have to read a few times until it fully settles in. You might take a little bit here and there and then hear it again and go, oh, now I got this one mastered. And then you move on to the next one. That's okay. Some of us have more than others. No one else we're not all the same. And so wherever you are on your journey, just give yourself some grace. And we got two minutes left. So that's about it, you guys, for tonight. Let me make sure I don't have any more questions. If you want to join me moving forward and building your plant-powered business, I'm happy to help you any way you any way I can. This is my podcast studio. This is where I shoot my videos. This is where I record my podcast. I love creating content. Um, when I started my podcast, I was sponsored by the first month. I was monetized by the second month and I had 100,000 downloads by the third month. So I really started to master the podcast marketing game, game, which led me to book writing and getting clients and creating online courses, doing happy hours like these, leading retreats in Italy, speaking all across the United States and Europe. And if that's something you want to do to spread the plant powered message, I know I can help you because I'm not special enough. I did it you can do it too. So love to help you. Foodhealsnation.com slash rise. Let me know if you are in and always email me anytime. Info at foodhealsnation.com. Those go to me and my assistant, Melissa, and the ones that are personal get filtered right straight to my inbox. So please feel free to reach out. If you have any questions that you don't feel, maybe they're too personal, you don't want to type in the chat. I totally get it. But I'd love to work with you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for No Meat Athlete for introducing us. So round of applause to No Meat Athlete. I'm going to let everyone go. Cheers. Happy. Uh, what day of the week is it? Wednesday. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. Happy, happy holidays. And if you're ready to build that vegan brand, that plant powered brand, that wellness brand in 2021, just hit me up and I'm, ha I'm happy to help you. All right, Food Heals Nation. I hope you enjoyed that training. If you're still with me, that tells me that you did and maybe um, we should work together next year. So I've got the Rise Mastermind going on. It's an amazing, it's really a community. That's what it is. It's a community of individuals with a mission to serve and help the world. So people that are writing books and podcasting and making video content and blogging and taking beautiful photos and um, Instagramming and all the things wellness related, fitness. Um, it's really a beautiful community. In fact, I just had my birthday um, December 2nd and all of the wonderful, beautiful members in my mastermind put together a beautiful gift for me. And I, I can't tell you how much it meant to me. I got, I was in tears. It's a box and a beautiful green box. And when you open it, it had a message from each of my clients or students just telling me, you know, happy birthday and how much I've affected their lives. And it just brought me so much joy. I can't even describe to you how grateful I am for this community that we've created and how we all help each other really rise together and we collaborate and we support one another. And it's just a group. So if you ever feel alone, you have someone, you have our Facebook group to reach out to. You've got the phone numbers of people in the group um, who you resonate with because so many people are on similar journeys and paths doing something in the wellness space. So it's such a beautiful group. I'm so grateful to all of my students and um, I wish that I could thank them all individually. I am sending you, if my students and clients are listening, care packages. So you will be getting some swag and some cards to say thank you for my present and just to say I'm so excited to work with you in 2021. And if you're not a member and you want to be, it's all at foodhealsnation.com slash rise. I would love to have you.
I thought I would read some testimonials from some of my um, most wonderful clients that have been with me for a few years now. This will be our, oh my gosh, I, I think our fifth iteration of the mastermind. So Alana Halden, she's Fork and Plants, a beautiful, beautiful Instagram blog. Um, she says, I'm a vegan chef, a recipe developer, food photographer, and blogger. I run a food blog called Sprouts and Krauts. I just completed the latest series of Allison Melody's Mastermind. Over the course of the past six months, I've learned so many different tactics that I'm now using to improve improve my business, including Instagram strategies, Facebook advertising, sponsorships, and sales funnels. Allison is a leading, is an inspiring leader in the wellness space and has made this information so easy to understand as well as accessible to us. Before I started the Rise Mastermind, I felt pulled in many different directions career-wise. Going through the Mastermind allowed me to reflect on my talents and passions and truly helped me to clarify my goals and solidify my path going forward. I came away from the Mastermind with so many tools and strategies to implement into my business and now I feel more equipped to build my blog and my brand. I highly recommend the Mastermind to anyone looking looking to take their health and wellness business to the next level. Join or just invest in yourself and you will see the results. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Alana. Alana is absolutely incredible. Check her out. Another amazing, beautiful testimonial from Marissa. She's an author, spot, um, speaker, and podcast host, not spodcast host. Um, Marissa says, when I started this mastermind, I set a goal for our six months together of creating a year-long weekly meditation program. I thought I would need all six months to get this off the ground. Because of this mastermind, I not only launched in a little bit over a month of signing up, I then set two more big goals, starting a podcast and writing a book. Because of the people and resources Ali shares in the Rise Mastermind, I not only was able to launch a new podcast and write my book, I was also able to make my book a number one bestseller in nine categories in the United States and number two in three categories internationally on Amazon. Way to go, girl. She's so amazing. Um, and her podcast is so good. It's called Incandescent. She says, to be able to say I'm an international best-selling author, podcast host, and creator of free weekly meditations is something I never, is something I thought I was years away from at the time of signing up for this mastermind. I'm signing up for another round. I think Marissa's in three or four now um, because I was able to crush, crush such big goals so quickly the first time around. I can't wait to see what I can do in round two. I can't wait to see either, Marissa. Allie brings in the exact people and resources you need to tape to help tackle whatever you're working on. And she does it with, with such love and support. This is a beautiful group that does the best of what a mastermind is supposed to do. Uplift, encourage, inspire, and support each other. Allie, thank you for creating this mastermind. Oh, thank you, Marissa. Here's another one from Chris. Chris has been in all of the iterations of the mastermind. She's from day one, the OG. She's an author and podcast host, Elevate Your Eight. She says, I owe so much to Allison Melody, my mentor and mastermind facilitator for creating the mastermind. Working with Allison and my other colleagues, I found the energy, courage, and determination to accomplish the following milestones. I finished my second book and launched a podcast. By the way, she's now on her third book. I created three online courses. I think she has more now because this testimonial is older. I signed my first three coaching clients, one of whom is coming back for a second round. I started a mastermind group for people who are looking to change careers. Allison has not only developed a thriving environment for entrepreneurs to learn and grow, but she has nurtured a community of wellness professionals who respect and care for each other. I'm fully dedicated to learning as much as I can in this entrepreneurial classroom, but Allison Melody is the only person with whom I I've invested for multiple programs. She could create training programs and screwing in light bulbs, and I would invest in it. I love that. If you want to invest in yourself and your business, invest in this mastermind. Thank you, Chris. So if you go to the website, there's lots more testimonials. We've got some guys too. Um, so if you're a guy listening to this, we do have men in the group. It is predominantly women, but guys, we'd love to have you. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's all at foodhealsnation.com slash rise. And it's for you if you want to wake up doing what you love every day and earning abundantly for that work and seeing the impact on your world on the world getting greater and greater than you ever dreamed possible. Um, maybe you're going to write your book this year. We had so many people write a book last year. We have 
we've had people write books the past few years, um, create new video series, start new podcasts, start a coaching business, create online courses, um, speak on stages before COVID, speak on online summits now or online masterminds or online Zoom calls. Um, so this is just for you. If you're sick of building someone else's dream or you're sick of being unemployed or you're sick of worrying where your next paycheck is coming from and you're ready to build your own thing, your own dream, your own wellness business. And if you just have that message burning up inside of you and you're ready to share it with the world and you just don't know where to start, um, this is for you. Or if you have something going and you don't know how to expand or grow your audience or grow your network, this is for you. So hit me up if you have any questions. Info at foodhealsnation.com. Go to foodhealsnation.com, foodhealsnation.com yeah, slash rise and get all the information and let me know if you have any questions. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and holiday season. Lots more great episodes on the way to you soon. See you next time. Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.